Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Drunk Knitting. Cheers. Hello. Cheers. <laughs> I wish I had one. It's being delivered tomorrow. Well, Trillian and I have actually quit drinking until we get to Iceland, so this is a non-alcoholic beer. Oh, nice. It's Amazing. Pra- huh? Practically tea. Nice. There's some really, really good non-alcoholic um, beer in um, in Iceland. They they won awards actually. Well, hopefully, I'll be back to drinking by Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> this is our. Trillian uh, wants to lose five pounds before all the sweater modeling, and I'm, I'm like, well, I could do that too. Health kick. When? Uh, so when is when is Iceland? July first. Oh my gosh, that's so soon. Yeah. And I can't believe I, I miss you guys. I am, um, I have pretty much just arrived here in New Zealand. Well, so, I haven't really arrived. <laughs> we should introduce our guest, actually. I was getting ready to say, like, tell, tell everybody who we're talking to, Kyle. So we are talking to Hera, whose last name I always thought was Harata's daughter, but it's not. Um, how do you pronounce it? That was actually pretty close. It's Hjarta oh. Those two things don't sound anything alike. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a, yeah, it's a long one. It's a long one and it starts with HJ. That's usually what I say if they need to look me up in New Zealand. It's the long one that starts with HJ. Well, Hera is a singer and knitter from Iceland and New Zealand, where she is right now, actually. And um, earlier this year, she had the number one album in Iceland, uh, which was very exciting. And she's been knitting Lopi sweaters for a very long time as well. And so we wanted to have her on to talk about um, her sweaters and her music and hopefully sing us a song and tell us what to prepare for because we're getting down to the wire. So a year ago last August, which is nine months ago, Joan started teaching me how to knit um, over Zoom. And the goal was that I would be able to knit a Lopi sweater in Iceland when we went to photograph the book. So um, I am knitting a test sweater right now. This is not going to be a Lopi sweater. This is just a sweater sweater. This is gonna be my first sweater. It's all gonna be one color. I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna do another sweater with color when I get to Iceland, but I wouldn't have believed it nine months ago, but this is like a free, this looks like a freaking sweater, doesn't it? It's, it's beautiful, like- that's amazing. And what a wonderful, um, what a wonderful time to learn to knit. Yeah, this lockdown has been um, weird and uh, unusual and horrible and kind of beautiful at the same time. Um, I connected with people that I just never normally connected with. Like Joan and I talk to each other once a week, which we never did before. Um, I know what's going on in you know, some people's lives. We probably never would have connected with you, Hera, um, if it wasn't you know, for us suddenly discovering this technology, which has existed for years, and just making time to spend time with one another. So it's been a remarkable time and I'm guessing I'm going to take this skill with me as uh, a memory of the past 15 months or so that we've been locked down. It's a beautiful thing. That's really, really wonderful. So Hera, you have a, a unique lockdown experience right now. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I uh, arrived in New Zealand 10 days ago. This is day 10 of a 14 day hotel prison quarantine. So I'm not allowed to leave my um, hotel room and uh, food gets delivered in a paper bag and I have to wear a mask to open my door um, three times a day. I can do like there's a little exercise area but I have to book a time and it's like 20 minutes and I can walk around in the same circle. No walking in the other direction, no running. Just <laughs> just very, um, very strict. Wow. And, uh, um, and the New Zealand Defence Force is, um, is looking after all of this. So it's, it was pretty, it was pretty amazingly organised, but I really, I, I'm not allowed to go anywhere. <laughs> it sounds like a Victorian prison. 
It's bizarre. I've had um, I've had two COVID tests um, so far, and uh, they come into a health check every morning. So they knock on the door with the masks, and they they shoot me in the head with a laser gun to take my temperature. Um, yeah, it's. Did you, did you get vaccinated? Yeah, I got vaccinated um, in Iceland just before I just before I left. So I was really lucky to um, to be able to to do that the the single jab vaccine from Janssen. So. I am um, I am vaccinated, but it didn't make a difference. I still have to wait the 14 days and um, and uh, clear three tests before I can enter the public. Well, <laughs> New, the Zealand, public. <laughs> New Zealand did very well throughout all of this, so their protocols are working. Yeah, it's amazing. It's really amazing. Like, no, you wouldn't apparently. I haven't I haven't been out yet, but apparently it's like it's like nothing happened. No one no one wears masks, and there's not a single case here. So, I think I'm 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 looking forward to hugging people. <laughs> yeah, they went back. They freaked out. They went back to normal very quickly, almost immediately. Yeah. So weird. Um. And Iceland actually hasn't been hasn't been so bad, but still, you know, still a, a bunch of quarantines and and masks everywhere, and and uh, the music industry is pretty much uh, <laughs> taking a break. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but it's been an amazing time for knitting, and I've I've done, and I'm actually uh, my current project is a, a quarantine jumper, so that I have something at the end of these fourteen days, kind of to remind me. Do you have it with you? Can you show us? I do. It's um. So I've only really spent uh, like three days knitting it, but yeah. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. It's gonna be um. It's uh. So there will be sleeves. I have I have done another one um of these, but um, but the the what do I say? The yarn is is so amazing. It's like a, a mohair silk blend, and it just feels like a cloud. Like it's so light and fluffy. Now, are you going top down? Yeah, top down, which is uh, which is unusual for me because the lopis sweaters are always always bottom up, and um, um, I have I have one I prepared earlier. <laughs> if you want to see a finished version, yes. So it's going to be like this. Very nice. Oh, that's lovely. Thanks. But um. And I just, I enjoyed making this so much. I had so much, like I really, really just loved every minute of it. So I wanted to, to get the same yarn and do it and do another one um, while I'm here. And for my leftovers, which was exactly like half a, half a roll, skein, roll, skein? Skeins, um, well, they're all, all, they're all different lengths, I think. Skeins, balls, and uh, what's hanks. Uh, cloud. <laughs> Um, but yeah, from my leftovers, I made a little, a little one for my cat. <laughs> so cute. Wow. Wow. So there, there, there will be photos. <laughs> Epic. Now do the cat, does the cat live in Iceland or in New Zealand? She's in New Zealand. She's, um, she okay. has been looked after here um, uh, for the last few while and, and um, I'm going to see her and see her in uh, less than a week. And uh, yeah, she's a hairless cat, so she would appreciate the jumper. <laughs> and you've you've often knit sweaters for your cat, haven't you? I have. <laughs> there are <laughs> some some not as popular as others. Like um, I kind of did this like stick stick man walk. Um, I made one that was a bit bit too big and a bit too heavy, but but when they when they're light and fluffy, they don't. Um, she likes it. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of sweaters as gifts, um, I was reading about um, Grilla, the Christmas cat, the Yule cat that goes around and um, does something horrible to all the children who don't get uh, uh, new clothes as gifts on Christmas. Did you grow up with this story? Oh yeah, and that, and it's is very much a thing in Iceland. So she is the um, Grilla is the mother of the Santa Clauses. Uh, we have thirteen of them, and they're all brothers. And she also had she's married to a troll, um, and she 
eats naughty children, but there's also the cat, the family cat, um, who eats the children who don't get clothes for Christmas. So, new, new clothes. so if you're if you're a kid and it's Christmas and you've opened you have you know twelve presents and you've opened eleven and there's no lopy sweater under there, you're terrified, right? When you open that last one. Yes, there's, I mean, yeah, this is where this is where like uh, Christmas socks are a quick save. <laughs> That's a that's a horrifying, but as I'm an adult with no kids, also wonderful uh, <laughs> Christmas tradition. Yeah. It gives me great joy to think of all these kids quaking in their uh, non Christmas socks. Uh, what do the twelve? The gorilla has twelve kids, mm -hmm. and they're all. Oh, they're all there's a bunch of trolls, and then there's the Santas. Okay, and they're all terrible, right? They do awful things. They do. Do you know, they do. Do you know all of their names and what they do? Uh, they're all named, uh, I can look them up, they're all named after, um, after kind of after what they do. So one of them slams doors, um, one of them steals, um, uh, licks uh, spoons, <laughs> one of them peeps through windows. <laughs> they're, they're, they're quite creepy. One of them steals meat with a hook. Um, uh, I think uh, one of them has a, like a, a peg leg. And, um, and and worries the sheep. It's it's bizarre, <laughs> but I mean we've grown up with it, so it's yeah. It's just Who a, comes up with this? Thing. Like <laughs> parents. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean there's lots. Of, yeah, it's definitely one of the um one of the really lovely things I think about Icelandic Christmas. I love I love our um, old traditions and the songs, and um, yeah. And then uh, we have one that um, that steals candles, and like on the, I think he's been translated. His name's been translated as Candle Beggar. And on the last night before Christmas, I think on the twenty third, um, you can leave a candle for him, and then you can leave like little treats for the others as well. Oh, mm. like some meat with a hook in it. <laughs> for, yes, possibly. <laughs> well, mm. So. How common is it to get a lopi sweater as a gift for Christmas? Um, I think generally that is, um, is, I don't know, it depends on the family, I guess, but I think it's a, it's a really personal thing. Like you, you need to, you need to have the measurements and stuff, but, um, um, I haven't uh, come across it as a, as a Christmas gift or given it as a Christmas gift, but it's been like, um, you know, something that I've done as a project and, and like I, I made one for my cousin, um, and just kind of, he was with me through every step of the way. Like I drew the, I drew the pattern up and back and forth about what, um, what kind of color and, and yeah, same with my brother. Um, it was, it was a birthday, birthday present. But they know in advance. Uh, yeah. Do you remember your first lopi? Um, my first one. Yeah, definitely, um, would definitely be, um, something by, by my grandma. Like, um, we just, and then my mom knitted um, sweaters for her and dad, and they were both so huge that they, I'm pretty sure they came down to their knees. And like, <laughs> it was like big cozy thing. So this, this sweater started out as another sweater um, from the Geek Knits book, and I really messed it up somehow. And Joan suggested I just frog the whole thing and, and start over with a different sweater. So I did have a knee length sweater, <laughs> accidentally knee length sweater. Oh, wow. Well, well, so frogging is when you make it up? You rip it, like rip oh, it, yeah. rip it. Oh, frogging is when you undo it. Yeah. Yes. Okay, wow. I, that's, that's a new term for me. Rikke up in Icelandic. Rikke up. Rikke up, yeah. So you had so it was already really, really, really long. It, oh, it went down to my knees. Uh, yeah. Devastating when you have to undo. Like. It, looked, it looks terrible. Oh. But this one looks pretty good. So this the second time seems to be working for me. Wow. I don't know who called it frogging first, but they did that because you rip it out. But when you say rip it, rip it, rip it a lot, it sounds like rib it, rib it. Oh, that's cool. Okay, that's amazing. I love that. <laughs> rib it. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So frustrating when, um, with this one, like, because there's so much, it's 
so much is happening all the time, like having to knit. Uh, I just knit backwards a couple of rows, which is just takes forever. And um, just because I'd been watching something and just started doing something automatically and, and did the opposite of what I was supposed to do. And then you don't see it until like, yeah, a few rows in. I did that on this one. I was just watching TV and not paying attention to the pattern. And I was kind of making it up as I went. So I had a big mess up down here and I had to unknit like three rows because you don't just want to pull it out. No, yeah, because it all sits funny. Well, um, yeah. I want to see it. Can I see? Oh, yes, yes. That's so I come closer. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow. Wow. Yeah, Is it's it going to be a little, it's going to be a cardigan for the book. That's really, really beautiful. Mm. I'm oh. very excited. So, and then, um, Go ahead. I don't have many of the uh, of the Lopa pieces with me because most of them like have been gifted. Um, I can, <laughs> but I uh, but I'm wearing the one like the the only one that I have with me that I've done, which is um uh, which is I, yeah, the shape of the jumper is um, by my auntie. Um, who's at Han Hanilable in, in um, Selfos, and then I modified it. So I made the sleeves a little bit longer. I did a different um, edge on the on the neck and sleeves, which is kind of like a t-shirt, and um, and I fitted it so that it didn't just go straight. So I can. Uh, so is there no ribbing on the sleeves? Um, no, the end is uh, the end is kind of like a t-shirt neck. Like the same as the as the neck. I like that. And look, if you can see, it's like oh, a little. Nice. It comes in yeah. a little bit, but it's still really loose. But it just has a, a little bit of fitting. <laughs> That's that way to show it. And did your and then, go ahead. Huh? Did your hand come up with that? No. <laughs> Sorry, too excited. Oh yeah, and then instead of um, instead of making it double, because you can because you can take lope from like a plate, you take the inside and the outside to do double. Sometimes you do triple, like with the really really heavy ones, you do quadruple. Um, I really like double, which is still really warm. But this one, instead of being double, it's um, it's single lope with one strand of mohair, which um, which gives it that that kind of mal look. And the, the mohair color is the same all the way through the pattern. And you probably can't even see, like there's a, there's a pattern down here, but it's gray. Yes. Um, and then this, the edge of this is just like, um, is one pearl row, which becomes the fold. But that, yeah. <laughs> no, that's so beautiful. I, Thank you. I, I love this pattern so much that I made I made a whole bunch of them. I think it did seven in uh, one year and um, gifted a bunch. That's the, the pattern now we need... on the cap on the neck. This huh? pattern? Is that the pattern on the on the neck? Yeah, I based um I based four five jumpers off this pattern, which I I made it up as I did this one. Wow. So, and then I kind of changed it a little bit for each one. So one of the things that I'm interested in learning is when people were making lopas in the 50s, you know, in, in the very beginning, how did they learn how to do it? And how did they, you know, get patterns if there weren't any? Did they make them and share them? Or did they just talk to each other? Or did they just show each other or did they sit around and knit together i think um uh, i think the the pattern of the loba pesa i think has come from the greenlandic traditional costume have you seen that no. it's um it's really heavy beads which are worn which are worn around over um over the neck and it's really really beautiful intricate patterns and stuff and that's i think yeah the national costume of Greenland, and I, um, I think that's where the idea for the Lopa Pesa pattern came from. Um, and there's been some research into this, and I think there's been there's been some research 
released um, recently in a book of, uh, about the about the history of the Love Peter. Can we talk a bit about your uh, music career? Because you've been a mainstay in the Icelandic music industry for quite some time now, right? Yeah, it's been a, been a long time making music. I just did, um, and I feel like I, I say I just did because um, it's been like a year since the album came out, but I haven't had a chance to tour it. So it still feels really new. Um, it had been a work in progress for well over three years and it was album, it is album number 10 and uh, it took a, took a long time to make. And then, and then it's been out, but I haven't been able to play. I was really lucky though. I managed to have a, um, an album release concert and, and it went number one, which was amazing. And, um, and now I'm here and, I'm, and I've got some uh, shows coming up, so I'll be able to tour it here. Uh, but it's been a quiet and a strange year on the music front. Well, congratulations on the success of your album. Thank you. <laughs> And your album release party wasn't that in a, in a place uh, like a, a a wool factory or something? Um, oh, I know that was a that was one of the the touring one of the mini tour shows. Oh. I did the um, I did the album release kind of in like a teeny tiny window in between social gatherings. Like it was like there was a gathering bands. So there was like a big band in a quarantine. And then they were like, oh, everything's great. Everything's fine. Um, we can all get together. And, and, um, and that's when I, when I did the show. And then it was like, oh, no, 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 back to quarantine. <laughs> so um, I was lucky and um, yeah. But you're gonna get to tour and do shows in New Zealand now? Yeah. Yeah, I, have a, um, I haven't been back here for two years, which is so bizarre because I've, I've lived here for, you know, for over 24 years and I've been zigzagging, but um, because of because of everything, it's been it's been two years since I've been back, and so much has changed um, post earthquake and rebuild, and you know the city's um, the city's um, going to be different. Can you play us a song from your new album? I I can I can. As this one's called Simple. Keep it simple under the moon, wrapped in a blanket full of stars, hiding from the afternoon. And you can have my pillow, it's almost brand new, and you are the company I choose. And let's stay here. Stay here, let's stay here, it's never ending, and it's over too soon, we're building pancake castles while the day is new, and you can have my hand. It's right here for you, and we have a thousand things to do, but let's stay here, stay here, let's stay here. brand new and you are the company I choose and let's stay here stay here let's stay here let's keep it simple ah. 
<laughs> Thank you. Oh, that was wonderful. Thank you. This one's about the about the little things, and uh, and it really like it was a thing during COVID, just appreciating um, appreciating the ability to stay home and and just chill. I certainly appreciated. I mean, I learned to enjoy more of my house and my house more. Like there are places that I'd never, you know, never spent any time in my house that we use all the time now. Nice. You know, we have a backyard, which we, for years, we just never went into the backyard, but we were out there every day now. That's wonderful. Like definitely, definitely something you do when, um, when given the time. I think I've sat on every single surface in this hotel room. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna go sit in the window now. <laughs> sit on the table. Um, so apart from music, um, you've been knitting for forever and you've made a whole bunch of sweaters yourself. And can you show us some of the things that you've made and worked on? And tell us like how you made them and how you came up with the patterns and all that knitting stuff. Knitting stuff? Okay. I have um, these. I have these. These two favorite jumpers, which are which are not handmade, but they are by an Icelandic company called Farmers Market, and they make these beautiful versions of the lopapeta. So this is um, this is a mohair um, machine knit, um, and it's based on the the lopapeta pattern, which I've worn so much, and I just discovered that I really really love the 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 super thin, super thin mohair thing. So I decided to try and I made it like a super thin, like a one strand mohair jumper, which is the worst thing, the <laughs> worst idea. It is so bad, um, but I finished it and it's, um, say it's see-through. You can see through the, the and it is, um, was based on this other one that I did, um, which is a short sleeve. You don't really often see short sleeve jumpers, but I really, I really love this like as a t-shirt. And I was like, I want to, I want to make a long sleeve, thinner, black version that I'll, I'll wear a lot. But this took so long, it was just, it was horrible. It's beautiful though. What made it take, lo uh, made it take so long? Because it's, um, because it's so, so teeny tiny. Like, my, you know, every stitch is teeny tiny. And when I finished it, I took, um. I crocheted some sparkly yarn through just in the neck, just like for a tiny little detail. And then I, I did um, the same, just one line down the back. So like, yeah, it was just, because it's just a single strand of mohair, it's like knitting with, um, what do you call it, twine? Like sewing machine thread? Thread, thread. Yeah, like knitting with thread which was, um, but I have this stubbornness. I couldn't, I couldn't stop. Like once I had a certain amount done, I, like I had to, I had to finish it. And this, this took forever. This was my COVID um, project. <laughs> and those are, that's all I have with me here. That's like, like these two and the green one and the pink one and this one, the rest, the rest are in, in people's homes. What do they, what do they call like the super thin Icelandic yarn? It's like, um Pletalopi and Einband are those the two? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's um, Einband is the the really 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 thin and strong one. Can be a little bit scratchy, I think. But um, Lope, um, I find if you if you just wash it when once you've made the garment just in shampoo and then soak it in conditioner for a while, it becomes really really soft. And, and they start, they shape, they become, they become you, like the Loba Pesa sweaters. Have you seen that? Yeah, like the more you wear it. This one is basically me. Yeah. Oh, they have, um, I don't know, it's my elbows. Yeah, I don't know, there's something, you can't really, can't really see it, but the, like the sleeves have become shaped like a second screen yeah we've seen we saw a little bit of that and then we saw um 
somebody who reinforced his elbows with leather because they were through. Yeah. And I saw a thing recently where people to wash the lopapasia, they do it in snow. Oh, I had like I instead of, yeah, instead of hand washing on a snowy day, they just take it outside and dust it in snow and then set it up again, that makes which sense. I thought was very interesting. <laughs> they push off snow. Like it doesn't, the snow doesn't sit, it like clumps on the outside. Do you, do you know about the Icelandic sailors gloves? No. The mittens. So we, um, tradition is for, like to knit mittens for the sailors with two thumbs. So you, oh, um, Kyle you a, knew about that. You tuck one in, um, and you just, you just wear it with a thumb tucked in. And when you wear a hole in one, then you, you switch them over and you get double, double wear. Um, I made, I went through a period of like making fingerless gloves for everyone. I think I, I made so many pairs of fingerless gloves that I, I, <laughs> I, I burnt myself out on them. <laughs> ah, but um, but yeah, I would put like the lope pattern, like to make them match, or like put people's letters in them and and stuff. Really, um... Yeah, I don't know what people who don't knit do, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I can't just like watch TV or just. You know, like it's such a good thing to to make you feel like you're doing something while you do something else. I've been listening to um, uh, audiobooks most lately, the the Sandman adaptation, like really um so fun, and it's like it's like watching a film while while knitting. I a lot of times I call it um, productive procrastination. Because you're maybe putting off something else you should be doing, but you're being productive, so it doesn't count. Yeah, you end up you end up with something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's such a such like yeah. I really yeah, I re it really is like a meditation and like a total way to relax the brain to put you know to make yourself not you know stress out about something or just you know just like I'm just going to occupy this part of my brain here and make something. Well, and you, I feel like you can see a lot with knitters where um, you pick up a project and maybe you're tense and then that tension kind of eases and you can actually see it in a garment, which I think is so cool. Like you can see how your life was going at that time based on maybe your tension or how the stitches are going or, you don't know, I love knitting. Yeah, me too. I, I did that with my, um, um, in been working like step by step through making a jumper with my, with my cousin who's like and it's nice I feel like there's a there, there has been a growing interest in it like when I was when I was a kid like I learned from my my grandma and um no one else in the family was interested like it wasn't really wasn't really cool and now you know to have that and to have always done it to be able to to then like pass that on and continue with it in the family is a really beautiful thing so my my cousins like started again recently and and her daughter my niece is also starting so it's it's beautiful it is now I've got Kyle knitting like yes. I, had, you, I feel like as a knitter you have to pass it on to at least one person oh yeah my great granddad used to crochet um out of rope he used to make uh, doormats out of like thick, chunky, uh, like knit rope. See, practical art. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like cream macrame. Is that how you say it or you say macrame? Macrame. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's good. That's a good thing. It's the best thing. I love it. I don't know what I would do without it. Like, oh, the, yeah, for World Knit Day one time, mom. It was a, there was a get together here in Christchurch outside, uh, uh, like in this big restaurant courtyard, Lo uh, lots of knitters came together and there was the, like the release of the needle, needle food, yarn and sock book. And there were like little challenges. And one of the, one of the challenges was you got two sticks of spaghetti and you had to see how much you could, how much you could knit. Like if you could actually knit a row on spaghetti sticks, incredibly difficult. Before they broke? Yeah, and they just got like shorter and shorter and shorter. <laughs> it's a it's a challenge, and uh, and one of the other things was what knit on a pair of tooth 
graphics, which I've done a few times. Like I've made little um, little cards for people, and uh, like when I gave my cousin his um, Lopa Pesa, I made a I made a card by like knitting a little bit on a couple of toothpicks and like making a tiny ball of wool, and I stuck it on the front of the card, and I was like, I'm going to knit you a sweater. There's a woman around here that literally knits like on medical wire. So she makes, um, they had some of her stuff in a local museum. She makes these little teeny tiny intricate sweaters and you see photos of them and you automatically assume it's a large sweater and then you see it in person and it's like this big. Is that the I'll have to pop some. Have you seen I, the I think she might've done something in Coraline too. Yeah. Let me look so. real quick. Mm -hmm. yeah the star jumper it really stays with me that video like seeing the seeing the itsy bitsy teeny tiny I do that um with uh I've got a tiny little crochet hook and sometimes um and sometimes I crochet with thread Althea Chrome that's her she's an artist here in our state in Indiana oh wow will you pop a link yeah I'm gonna give a link I'll pop this up for everybody to see as well but It's just a little article about her. She's just absolutely amazing. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited for you that you're back home after over a year because that just, yeah. I can't imagine. It was, it was hard being 40 minutes for my parents and not being able to see them, you know, like we would put masks on and kind of wave outside of windows, but that was about it. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Mm. so so crazy they uh, came last time I saw them was when they came to Iceland over to, over two years ago now um and like we talk all the time but it's not the same I want to be like you know with them going through things and uh yeah it's been such a, a whirlwind oh Seems like it's been about two inches for, you know, five days now. <laughs> yeah, I know Almost. that. Like the hardest bit is always that little extra two inches of the body. Like I keep comparing this one. Like I feel like, oh, surely the body's done now. Like because it is a short one, but I compare it to this one, and there's still like that much to do. So hopefully I'll finish the body today. But this is like, um, is like a, from a website called Knitting for Olive, the pattern, and they make their own yarns. And like, I've just never made anything so soft. That's gorgeous. I don't want to take it off, like in the big, like puffy, puffy, warm sleeve. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't washed it um, not since I made it. I'm kind of scared to, like, I don't want it to lose any of its cloudness. Um, but it's, yeah it's called the waffle sweater this has been just I could just can't recommend it enough like the this the pattern I love like you're obviously such an authentic talented knitter I love it <laughs> thank you you too I'm just I'm so excited to like to to see this book and like what comes out of like all of this I'm like yeah I love it I I mean yeah I never I never write things down like I really admire like you making patterns and like sharing with people like um, yeah it's my problem is I I write everything down but it looks like a drunk kindergartner wrote my notes so then I have to transcribe them and it's awful it's a lot of cursing at myself like why can't you just write in English in complete sentences but we get there in the end. <laughs> well, it's the creative process. It sounds like how I write music. It's like, ah, oh, and then I'm gonna make it go swoopy. <laughs> and, you know, they're not terms that anyone else understands. I can look at that and go, oh, yeah, I was thinking something like this. <laughs> I, love, I love that about teaching. I do like the um, uh, songwriting workshops and I get to go to, to kids at school and say, look, no one can tell you how to, to write a song. You can just do it. Um, you know, however works for you. And I, I imagine that, you know, if you can understand the patterns, that's, that's creative. I had a tech editor one time ask me to send her my notes. She's like, it might be helpful. And I kind of laughed and I 
took pictures of them and sent them and she just wrote back, never mind. Can I play a silly song? Please do. Just because um, just I'm remembering this. Is, um, uh, ah, feeling the skin from a mandarin on a Monday morning. It undresses so easily and I wonder if it's anything like me. It has no stones. I think I would have stones if I was a mandarin. But would I be bitter or would I be sweet? And I've got time. Uh, I've got time to think this through. I've got time to stand around and I have time to do nothing, nothing, nothing at all. I'm knitting my first pair of socks at home on a Sunday evening. FNOTC? No. I was on Amanda Palmer Loses on a Friday night on the Oh, video. right. Okay. Oh. <laughs> um, and then it was, uh, yeah, something about playing video games. Uh, does that mean I'll be playing video games when I'm wrinkly and old? And it was about knitting and doing nothing, and um, I can't remember it all. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just going off on a tangent. No, no, it's not a tangent. <laughs> we have that album too. I think that was right after we met you. Yeah. Time. I just remembered that it's it was knitting and it was video games and it was about having time and peeling mandarins and like here I have mandarins, I have time, <laughs> I'm knitting and I'm playing video games and it just feels like it's come full circle. It's like, oh wow, it's all of those things. Um yeah. Well, Hera, thanks for joining us and telling us your stories and showing us your knitting and singing us a song. We are looking forward to going to the land of the midnight sun uh, very soon and checking out all the sweaters and meeting all the people and driving around and having the adventures. Thanks for helping us out. Thank you. That was wonderful. I can't wait to see the book. <laughs>